Drilling holes for the side dot markers is easy when you do the ones along the, the shaft. When you get up to the 12th fret and beyond, if you do go beyond, in this case I'm not going to, uh, you, you need a really long bit. In this case it's a sixteenth of an inch and it's pretty floppy. When you're trying to patch a hole in a soft wood soundboard, I find you get a much better result if you run the drill backwards and use it as a reamer. Much cleaner. So I heated up the bridge like I normally do and got a spatula under it to loosen it. And that whole process went along just fine. No real surprises until I got just to the middle point there and it all started to feel kind of familiar because I was running into something. Okay, so we learned some things. You'll recall in a previous video where I was working on the guitar that had the bridge inlaid directly into the top, I ran a router bit into some what I thought were metal pins, and it turns out those are actually original to the guitar. These seem to be wire brads that he put in there and clipped off so that the bridge wouldn't move around when he was gluing it in position. Um, the other thing you can see is that there wasn't perfect contact between the bottom of the bridge and the top. There's an area uh, that was left unglued and it's oxidized over the years into this dark color here and makes a little Christmas tree when you put the two parts together. Lost a thin skim of top wood here which is kind of par for the course when trying to take off a bridge that's glued on with hide glue. As I've said in previous videos, the two part hide glue will suck the two parts together really really tightly on almost a molecular level and you can't get a knife in between uh, the two surfaces without damaging them somewhat. But that's not bad, that's uh, an acceptable result and I feel pretty good and came off pretty clean. Now I'm going to be shifting this new bridge forward slightly to account for that misalignment. And as you can see, the oxidized wood there where the previous bridge wasn't in contact with the top is still sort of visible at that point. It's quite dark. And I'd like to lighten that up if I can um, to make it blend in. I will eventually repolish the entire surface here. There's actually quite a lip of shellac around both sides. Um, so we'll have to flatten it out, do a little bit of light sanding and then repolish. But I would, if I can, like to take some of the color out of there. There's a chemical that will do that really nicely on spruce and other softwoods. It's called oxalic acid. And um, it's a component in things like um, outside, like um, backyard deck restorers, that kind of thing. Or people put it on fences, wooden fences. And it just basically unoxidizes the wood and brings it back to the, the lighter color it had when it was fresh. Now, that stuff is not so easy to find. Uh, you can buy it from chemical supply houses, costs an arm and a leg, and they only sell it to you in great big quantities. And I don't really need a pound of the stuff kicking around here. I, I won't use that in, you know, two or three lifetimes. What I've discovered is this product here. This is Barkeeper's Friend which is a cleanser which is quite inexpensive. It's been around forever and its primary component is actually oxalic acid. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this, uh, put it into solution and then I'll paint it on the surface and uh, we'll leave it for about 20 minutes and see what happens. Hopefully that will take some of the color out. I've um, tried that before, did a couple of samples and it actually does seem to um, brighten the wood up quite a lot. So hopefully it works. So I've got about a teaspoon and some water here. Um, this stuff, you don't want to get it on your hands for any length of time. Certainly don't want to breathe it in. It's really bad to breathe in. You know, usual safety precautions. Um, now, pure oxalic acid will uh, dissolve completely, but this stuff here being a cleanser, I think it's got some, some like scouring material in there too, some minerals, some other components. So I'm just going to filter that through a 
paint filter just to be on the safe side. I mean, I intend to obviously clean off the surface after it's been um, treated. Okay, that's substantially better than it was. Um, it looks more like the kind of oxidation that the rest of the soundboard has been subject to. So that's good, should look more even. Um, these lighter spots eventually will, of course, mellow out again, and hopefully it all ends up looking the same in a couple of years. Anyway, it's uh, sufficient and we can move on from there. Um, as I said, I gotta do some sanding. I'm gonna repolish. There's a little bit of a ridge of finish on the back edge here that uh, has built up over the years from people putting more shellac on and I gotta knock that down and try to make it more even. Since I'm moving the bridge it's a good idea to plug up those previously drilled bridge pin holes so I need to make something to fill it with. I'm using a piece of spruce and banging it through a swage block here which is just a piece of steel with a set of different diameter holes drilled through it tap it on through and end up with a custom fit dowel. It's time to make a new nut. Look what someone did. Um, this is unforgivable. Just ridiculous. A little dab of glue on the surface that contacts the fingerboard is all that's necessary. Why would you go and pin it? I mean, I gotta, I gotta drill those out now. I can't just knock it off like I normally would. Okay, trying to figure out where to put the bridge on this guitar. And it's not easy in this case because the neck on the instrument is slightly canted relative to the, the body. Um, I don't know whether that happened during the neck reset that it had or whether it was always like that. I tend to suspect it was always like that, just based on where the bridge was. Um, the other thing is the body itself, the center line of the top, in other words, the place where the two halves, the seam is, is not centered on the body plan. And also, it's slightly canted in one direction by a few degrees. So this means the center line is useless in terms of figuring out positions, you know, where this bridge should be. To get around that, um, I had to plot out the position for the saddle, the saddle, front edge of the saddle slot on the bridge, and I know where that should be relative to the front edge of the bridge. Um, also, because this is a left-handed guitar, you have to remind yourself to, you know, make it a left-handed slant. And I can put a straight edge on the fingerboard, butt that up against the nut, which is roughed in, and I can get a general sense of where that saddle slot should end up. And because it's not going to be perpendicular to the center line of the top, the only other way I have to establish the, the right location is to measure to the front edge of the bridge. And the way I did that was I ran the straight edge along the line where the binding meets the ebony, straight lines on both sides, and make sure that the measurement was the same to the front edge of the bridge. So I'm just getting rid of the finish in the area of the footprint of the bridge. Um, we can tell something else about Hensel's technique. It looks like he finished the entire soundboard, like probably painted on shellac, let it dry before applying the bridge. After the shellac was on there, it seems like he took like a one inch chisel and just sort of scraped roughly across the, uh, the soundboard. Didn't go all the way to the edges. Uh, he left a, a line of shellac on both sides. Um, and it was pretty rough. I mean, the finish itself, or the uh, soundboard itself, is kind of chipped out away and, and sort of washboarded um, from that rough scraping it took. So I'm just going to do this, and then I will finish up with a little bit of um, like uh, 400 grit sandpaper on a flat block, or 220 grit sandpaper. There are two holes down here in the heel, and the customer asked if I could patch those up. This first one, uh, no problem. This is just remnants of an old strap button. It's quite a big divot around the actual screw hole. Probably the easiest and cleanest way to deal with this is to actually just drill it out and make a plug of end grain mahogany and pop that in there. This top one, though, I'm thinking about because um, 
Well, for one reason, for one thing, it's good that it's there because it lets me know that there's actually a screw in this neck. And if I'm going to drill this out and plug it um, and make it, you know, disappear as much as possible, there's still going to be a screw in that neck. And uh, thinking about the next person down the line, if this ever needs a neck reset, uh, I don't know if I can in good conscience just leave it like that. I think probably the best thing to do, and this is slightly controversial, is I'll take it out, I'll drill all the way through, and then I will insert the screw in from the inside of the guitar, basically like a, a modern bolt-on neck. Now, obviously, this guitar didn't originally start with a bolt-on neck. It had a, you know, a dovetail, but given the nature of the repairs here, I don't know what's underneath. This could be, I mean, the dovetail cavity on this could be filled with epoxy, for all I know. But there's a screw in it, and that usually means that there's a reason for the screw. And if there's got to be a, a screw, I want it to be accessible and uh, to announce itself. So that's what I'm going to do. I will excavate as much as I can, try to dig it out, and see if I can get to the head of the screw and extract it. And we'll make a plug for that one too. So as soon as I started drilling, what do I hit? Metal. Uh, either they broke off the screw or they tried to put some kind of metal reinforcement in here or something. In either case, say goodbye, nice sharp brad point drill bit. Thanks. After some digging around, I managed to open up the hole and out came the screw with no problem. Just a great big Robertson head screw. I made some plugs out of some side grain mahogany. And then spent some time carving it down so it matched the surface. And after that I put a little color on it and a little bit of shellac and it blended in pretty nicely. Do you guys know about cleaning the uh, surface of a bridge that you're going to glue with acetone, uh, rosewood bridges? It's very important. Basically it takes off the resin and you get a much better glue bond. See, look at all that that's coming off. I do this a couple of times, try to leach out as much as I can. And so I got some nice reproduction tuners from Stuart McDonald here in a weathered brass finish. Customer actually prefers a black button to the cream colored ones, so we're going to have to take these off. And unfortunately there's no easy way to do that. Um, you can try to heat up the shaft and uh, pull them off, but I find that the amount of pressure it takes to get these off, you'll end up warping or breaking something in the mechanism. So, you know, we sacrifice the buttons, they go away and just use a, a nipper. It's tenacious stuff. So these actually have a rectangular um, section on the shaft there. Some of them have little, um, they almost look like Phillips head screwdrivers. They're kind of pointed, like a star-shaped point. So that's nice, and the buttons that they sell have a, a, a hole that will go in there. So again, I'm going to heat the shaft up with a soldering iron here, just enough to make the plastic a little bit more malleable, and I'll press them together in a vise. It takes a while for the steel to heat up. This is just my cheapo soldering iron, the one I use for removing frets and things like this. I've got my finger on the back end of the post there, and I can feel when the heat starts to travel. Then I'll know that the tip is good and hot. This step might not even be strictly necessary, but I feel it, you know, it helps a little bit. All right, that feels warm enough. So being fairly quick about things, we get the button located. And I want to clamp on the back end of the post here. I don't want to clamp on the edge. So get that in position on the vise, and gentle, even pressure, and you'll feel its seat. I'm just using some 2400 grit micro mesh here, and that gets rid of that plastic looking gloss and makes it look an awful lot more like ebony. It's a little thing, but it's, you know, everything adds up. Well, it can't ever be easy, can it? So these things here, not only were they on backwards, but 
This is a non-standard spacing. Someone came along at some point in the past, plugged these nice holes up, and put these things on. Usually tuners have 70 millimeter spread from outside to outside. Okay, so I made some little side grain plugs here out of quarter inch. Uh, this happens to be Spanish cedar. Um, and, you know, it's better than using a dowel because um, it's side grain, it's easier to drill through and it doesn't shrink in a different fashion from the rest of the headstock. So, nothing special, just put a little glue on them. Have to put one in from this side, one in that side, there, 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 there. So there's a lot of plugs to do. Okay, it's time to drill the new tuner holes. I have the old ones plugged up now. Um, obviously I have a jig that will keep things in alignment. But there's a, an intricacy when you're doing this on a guitar that already has these slots routed through it. On a new guitar, generally I will drill the holes first and then route those slots. Because what happens is a drill bit comes through onto the inside surface here and if it's not backed up with anything, the fibers on that inner wall like to explode. They will tear out and twist and it gets very messy. So I have to make some plugs to fill those channels up. Um, they'll just be inserted in there to take up that pressure. One of these slots is pretty regular and uniform. The other one is not. It's It varies. Here's a shot of the plugs. Just some extra spruce I had hanging around. I fit them pretty closely to the channels. My low-tech drilling jig registers off the back surface of the headstock and the quarter-inch drill bit there. It's a brad point. Just goes in the hole and uh, proceeds as you imagine it would. Okay, I think we're ready to call this one done. The bridge there, that looks all right. I also put the bridge pad in there underneath. Uh, you've seen me do that before a number of times so that the ball ends don't come through and uh, the uh, string windings are good and deep in the bridge. I think those tuners look right at home. Those great big gaping holes in the heel are gone. Side dot markers look like they've always been there. Got a nice dry voice. Sounds like an antique. Quite nice. Nice guitar.